Hello learners, welcome to the studios of NIOS. Today our lesson is care of children in early years and our topic for today is early stimulation, building curiosity, motivation and learning. So you can see I have so many things here with me. Soft sound, little louder and very loud. Look at the way Kavita is enjoying. Now Kavita is with me today because she will tell us what children like and what they don't like. They like being in an environment where people listen to them, where people are playing with them. Children need many kinds of stimulation that children learn through their senses. So it's very important to give children experiences which, give, which activate their sensory abilities, which provide them experiences through their various senses. But we also have to remember what children like. Now, this is a sound. And look at the way Kavita is happen, having fun. Now, oh, oh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. The, that jingle fell from my hand. Nothing. Don't have to be afraid. So, a newborn baby may appear to be just in a cycle of sleep and fe feeding. But don't forget. She's listening to everything and making a sense of the world. See how baby was listening to everything? Or we have heard in our family, oh, 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 look at the way baby is responding. Baby is laughing. He's listening to all our talk, the baby. So these are all examples of the fact that babies are receptive. Sometimes, you know, elders in the family will also say, the baby is anxious. Mother has got delayed, as if the babies can read time. But you know what happens is that they have their own, they absorb everyday rhythms and they make a timetable of their own, which is sometimes referred to as the, they have a biological clock. Their senses are working all the time, sometimes over time. So remember, what does that mean, over time? They listen to loud noises or they see some kind of fighting. They don't know what it's all about. And when they don't get an answer, they, they have anxiety. Remember when the loud noise happened, then how she, Kavita stuck to me? But I explained to her. Now do you see the slide? There's a little child being read to. And there's a little child who's watching the mobiles. You see, we have these kind of mobiles. Children, they are put on children's where they sleep or they are hung from a rope and children watch it. It's visual stimulation and it helps children coordinate their, the two movement of the two eyes. Sometimes they like sounds. That's auditory stimulation. So we were talking about visual stimulation. There is many kinds of stimulation. Tactile stimulation, auditory stimulation, kinesthetics. So we'll play a video and then We'll discuss what was happening in the video. So you saw the video? Wasn't it nice? The way the baby was laughing really made you happy. What kind of things were happening in it? The adult was rocking the baby. The baby was responding by playing, by laughing. And both the adult and child were laughing. That is what is often referred to as serve and return. Similarly, you can talk to the child also. And that makes a whole interaction. And such actions happen all the time. Here, there was visual stimulation also, which was helping the child to see what was the adult doing. And she was making uh, lots of similar gestures. Then she also in the play, she held the box and put it over her head and rocked and laughed. So there are so many things that happen. Now, let's see. Let's see how Kavita will enjoy. It helps children. Try it. Kavita is sitting with me. But all children enjoy. They sometimes enjoy loud music also. They enjoy loud music. 
not loud sound. So if you go this, they say, oh, their eyes move. And it's a lot of stimulation that so many different sounds can come at the same time. And you can create a rhythm. And that is very, very enjoyable. And you clap and you'll see, children also will copy you. So noises, stimulation, watching helps children to grow, helps children to watch, observe, and try and imitate. We have talked about many things that audio, visual, uh, kinesthetic, uh, tactile, all these um, sensory experiences help the child. If you give good experiences to the child, it helps the child to grow, it helps the child to think, it helps the child to associate. And remember, the early experiences make the foundation for lifelong learning. So, it is very important to be able to uh, provide and monitor and regulate the way you interact with the child. And if sometimes a loud noise happens, explain to the child. If sometimes the child is exposed, first and foremost, try and create environment. Now, look at this, these pictures. There is music. So what music I was playing and showing you, the child is trying on his own. Then in one of the pictures, there is a little toy radio and the baby is lying by himself or herself and just enjoying the music. And in this picture, there is a little uh, whistle kind of a toy and the mother is joyfully sharing it and they are having fun. So this is also through the auditory stimulation, the child is getting a respiratory exercise. Now here again, children are being, this is watching adults. By whatever kind of way the children observe, uh, they try and imitate. Now I have put the slide on the top is a little girl trying to feed, a, feed her doll. Here there is an adult reading a picture book. These are, this is another kind of visual stimulation. The father is also, um, you know, reading a, um, you know, painting with the child. Here, children are listening to music. So auditory stimulation is of many kinds, which gives a lot of joy and gives a lot of, and such joyful experiences enthuse a positive and a happy child. And a happy child is able to connect with the world in a very interesting manner and is motivated to learn more, is curious about what are the different things that are happening around uh, in the surroundings. So therefore, the auditory, the visuals help children a lot. Sometimes they learn about the world through what they see or sounds they hear, or the way people interact with them and interact with each other, just as I've been trying to tell you. So just as we've been saying that it's important to give experiences to children which help them to connect with the world. Now, sometimes or the other, children will encounter experiences which don't make meaning to them. At that point, cuddle the child, explain to the child, caress the child. So through your soft voice, through your, your communicating to the child that it's all right. Remember, children's personalities are shaped to a large extent by what they experience in their early years. Sometimes you provide children objects to play with, to learn about textures, which is referred to as tactile stimulation. There is a very nice sensory experiences of touching. Remember, I started talking about toys and materials and doing things with your hands. Look at the way children are enjoying working with clay, creating different objects out of it. Therefore, and similarly, many, many textures if children are introduced to, they learn about what is rough, what is soft, what is smooth. And not only do they touch and feel, but they also learn about the variety of surfaces that are available and that they will encounter as they grow. In the next slide, what you will see is a child is trying to balance. Again, a new texture, wood, and the child is balancing. That this kind of experience is of playing uh, the child may be at home or at school or in an early child care center, but the child is independently trying to work out. It's therefore, providing a variety of experiences. Remember, early stimulation sustains motivation, creates interest and a desire to do things. In short, play with different 
medium such as clay, water, sand or touching various surfaces allows children to feel different textures. Now we will discuss the things and materials that become play. At home we have all, often seen that the child's best toys is the real telephone or the real cooking vessels. A laborer's child might like to play with clay. The farmer's child may want to play with uh, you know, the seeds and why other parents are working in the field. So children create their own toy materials also. Just as we were seeing, now you can see children enjoying themselves in the sand. Now the slide where the children are holding a big spade, which this is children's play. All the time if children are picking up big objects, it's not really child labor. These children are just playing. Just as in the homes, our children will play with real vessels, they're not really cooking, they're just playing. So here also, we must be able to understand that whatever objects are there in the child's surroundings become their play objects. Whatever they see around themselves become their play materials. So in short, if you don't want a child to do something which you think is not appropriate for children, don't expose children to that. Children may like, like outdoor play. Children may like to play together. So indoor and outdoor play both have important place in children's life. Play outside also gives them exercise for physical development. Play inside creates teamwork. Uh, again, feeling and experiencing different textures, different shapes, different sizes, all very important for them to build concepts which will help them for later life. There are many kinds of stimulations that we've talked about. We've referred to kinesthetics and kinesthetic experiences where, now when children are going up and down like this, what children are doing is they're experiencing space through movement. So which is called the science of movement is really kinesthetics. The children are jumping up and down on the leaves, hear dry leaves, they're hearing sounds. So, so kinesthetics is an experience which helps them to build a sense of adventure, to be able to experience the vastness of the uh, earth around them, of what, what all is there in their environment. Now you watch the next video. It's all about music and experiencing movement to music. You saw all the children were responding to music. All the children were uh, trying to look at the adults dancing. In conclusion, babies have to be attended to. Babies have to be talk to, babies have to be made to hear different kinds of sounds, which really happens because attending to babies, giving attention to babies in many ways helps their growth, survival and development. Development really happens as children experience. Children's curiosity, motivation and learning skills are based on the energy, warmth and playful interactions that we put them through. The more enjoyable experiences we provide children, the more happy children they will be and more willing to learn, more willing to connect with the people around them. We'll meet again in the next video where we'll be talking about what are the different kinds of settings and how we should ensure that every child gets the attention that is due to them. Thank you.